Okay, I have just come out the uh, one of the entrance doors to the ticket lobby of Ottawa International Airport. I'll now go back in through the very large revolving door, and you'll notice the door is very much larger than most revolving doors because it's built to handle large pieces of baggage, people in wheelchairs, and other bulky objects. So now we'll head back into the ticket lobby. this revolving door. It's motor powered and it's automatically activated when anybody comes near it. The rest of the time it shuts down. Now you're in the ticket lobby and uh, as you can see by looking either direction, there are ticket offices and uh, offices where boarding passes are issued for all of the airlines that fly out of this airport. It's, it's a big room and uh, at the moment, it's not very busy because there aren't any flights departing uh, immediately, and there aren't very many people flying tickets. But at certain hours of the day, especially early in the morning, this place is just full of people rushing in to pick up their boarding passes and run to catch their departing aircraft. It's a lot bigger than it would need to be if it was no busier than it is at the moment. But there are peak times, several times a day, when it is extremely busy. Each airline has a number of ticketing positions so that they can cater to several lines of uh, people who either want to buy tickets or uh, submit their ticket for inspection and receive their boarding pass and check their luggage. Yeah, there was a T-Bird military. Up. Or maybe he's just landed, I guess he's slowing down, yeah. You know. Sort of executive purposes for being around when there are only one or two guys going somewhere. It, it's the military's. But, uh, what happens when the when it snows here? Is it a, is it a big problem in, in the Ottawa? It's always a big problem, of course. But uh, traditionally, we've stayed open most times. We've I was just going to say, you've got as good a record as anybody yeah, in that Yeah, probably regard. better than a lot. Oh, we'll, better, way better than a our lot. Our record's a lot better than Toronto and Montreal, for example. That's right. Our crew is, we have a pretty good crew here. I, and um, I've always been impressed. Yeah. The uh, one the thing that uh, is, it happens when you get snow, as you can see, this snow is very light at the moment, but you see what it's done to the visibility. The visibility is down to only a few miles compared yeah, to... Down, we're down to IFR weather right now. Yeah, exactly. And so you that creates uh, navigation problems and all the rest of it. That means that your aircraft are on full instrument for a good part of their letdown coming in, and uh, while your IFR stuff has to be worked just right. And, uh, you notice on that... 737 out there. If you notice, it's a bit looks a bit hazy around the tail end. That's the exhaust from the auxiliary power unit that keeps all the services running until the main engines start. And it's put back there because there's space back there, and it's far enough away from the passengers that it doesn't cause a lot of confusion and so on. And that's one of the uh, Canadians that's been converted to their new paint job, and it looks very nice. You notice the baggage cargo doors are open on it. Presumably they've still got some baggage to load. The, uh, are the loading bridges working as well as everybody here. thought they oh, were going to yeah. yeah. That's we're a great improvement. Yeah. We're having a little difficulty with the with the bridge heads, for example. We uh, not on this particular gate here further on down we have about we're putting the A310s and whatnot. Oh, yeah, oh, they're higher, right? Eh? Yeah, bigger yeah. aircraft. And we're having a little difficulty getting getting the match because the, 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 the shape of the, of the fuselage uh -huh. of the aircraft. Right, right. So you got to hit them on an angle. And yeah, because an your front door is on the, on the tilted yeah. part. Exactly. Right, yeah, right. So what's the, I'm just pointing now at a truck that's right in front of me. It's, it looks like a little flat truck. It's on the right, it says electric on the side. What's that truck for? Well, this. Yeah, that guy right there. What's well, that? That's, that's the tractor that pushes the aircraft out from the loading bridge when he's ready to go. What kind of an engine would they have in something like that? Well, to pull? quite enough power to move a aircraft with an all-up weight of uh, 60 odd tons, fully loaded, and uh, move it without too much jolt and jar and uh, shock to the nose wheel where the thing hooks on. Is there a, a battery thing that they have inside airplanes, like a battery truck? They charge it up? No. 
No? That's a ground power unit that you see hooked on. Yeah, that, the there is ground power on for some of the electrics, but the auxiliary power unit is also running at the tail of the aircraft because you can see the, the heat haze of the exhaust just by the tail there. So you realize you've got sort of full air conditioning going on there, heating and or cooling as the case may be. And galley. that's all the galley and the, yeah, all the coffee pots are running and all that. So you got a pretty big load there and you've got air circulation to keep the passengers, the early boarding passengers or people that have come in on the flight and are waiting to go on. They've all got to be kept comfortable. So you've got a lot of systems to keep running. So that auxiliary power unit puts out enough power to do all that and also to start the main engines when necessary. And the, the tractor merely pushes the whole arrangement back because although you can back uh, 737 with full reverse on it makes an awful lot of noise and they don't do it very often and uh, it's not recommended <laughs> so they use a tractor which is much quieter uh, one of my friends who flies 737s has on occasion backed out of the wrong slot that he was directed into at Toronto International on one oh, night yes. and there wasn't a tractor around and the guy said geez I'm sorry you know I'll cause you a delay and he already said the hell with that do I have permission to use full power and back up yeah. and the guy said can you and he said sure <laughs> it was 37 200 didn't have any trouble in actual fact we uh, there are several of the carriers here now doing that yeah. Air Canada's doing it on a regular basis with DC 9s and 7.7s yeah, of course, nines, uh, the 9s make more noise than the 727 for some, yeah. some reason there's a 737 on approach right now it's just touching down oh yeah there he comes Jim, you see, Jim, you see this guy just coming in? Yep. Yeah, that's nice. Another Canadian. Seven. Yeah. You see the guy with the two red bat on? He's the guy that's directing the uh, approach. Prior to them getting to or hand it over to this lab, there's a direction light right here that yeah, tells him it's this one. Yeah. Well, it tells him that he's on red. Oh, oh yeah, right straight on the seven. Yeah, yeah right. See, he's got a yellow line on the ground, if you can see it. He taxes, puts his nose wheel right up the yellow line. Move a bit closer to the window there so I can hear your voice, Pedro, yeah. please. Uh, he's coming in now, uh, following the marker on the pavement, and uh, he'll come in until his windshield touches the checkered yellow and black bar in front. That'll tell him that his door is exactly opposite the landing bridge. Now, there he's coming in, 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 in. There it's touching. He's in there now. Now the loading bridge is moving out to cover the door, so when they open the door, there won't be a lot of snow glue in the airplane and a lot of cold air. And then the passengers can come out and uh, in their business suits or any way they like. They're not exposed to the cold air at all. You notice the bar that he brought his windshield up against is now swung out of the way. You probably also notice there are several bars there to accommodate these slightly different configurations of different aircraft. See the bridge is moving out there hydraulically. And uh, tipping down to cover the top of the door. There, now it's set. Now they can open the door and you walk out in heat and comfort. Uh, and the people will be coming up this uh, loading bridge and through the door right here beside you, if you are interested in that. You notice the ground power supply is plugged into the plug in the front of the aircraft. And the baggage is already starting to be unloaded. So it doesn't take very long for the operation to... Oh, no. I guess it's important to it's be high the, speed, though. The whole eh? thing is, is a matter of minutes. It's supposed to be 10 minutes from wheel stop to first bag on the carousel. Well, 20 minutes. Here, here, here are the passengers coming in beside you through the doorway. Right? 